In life, we have choices about the kinds of things that we look at, the kinds of things we listen to, the kinds of things we bring into our minds. In the ancient world, Paul, or St. Paul, wrote some advice to people living in a place called Philippi. And Paul says, you know, when you're thinking about things, when you're bringing things into your mind, when you're bringing things into your soul, what, what kinds of things should you focus on? And he says, think about things that are true. Think about things that are noble. Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, think about these kinds of things. Well, let's look at the list here. True, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. In the middle there are the same words in Spanish, and then on the right are the words in French, if you, if you want to compare. Now, this list comes to us from a man who lived over 2,000 years ago. He was born about the year 5 AD, and he died about the year 64, 65, 66. AD. He was a leader in a movement that was growing very rapidly at the time in the Roman Empire, the movement of Christianity. And he was executed. He was a victim of the Roman state, executed um, because of his leadership within this movement. And St. Paul lived in a radically different world. He had no conception of electricity. Of course, it would seem impossible to him that somehow he could get into a vehicle and fly from present-day Greece to present-day Rome, for example. No conception of air flight. To him, getting around means getting on a horse, getting on a ship, walking. He had no conception of what a modern hospital might be like. And the language we're communicating in now, nothing like it existed in the world that Paul lived in. And so, Paul, who wrote these words that we were just looking at a minute ago, lived in a very, very different culture. And he lived in a place that's far removed, at least from students in the United States, or from students in Canada, or from students in Australia, or New Zealand. We look at the lines there. These are places Paul traveled to in his life. Present-day Israel, present-day Lebanon, present-day Turkey, present-day Greece, present-day Italy. So Paul is far removed from us in time. He's far removed from us in culture. And the part of the world that he lived in is far removed from most of the people who will you know, look at this video, right? particularly those of us living in the United States. He's far removed from us in language. Paul was multilingual, and the language he wrote in is Greek. And that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 there in Greek. And unless we've studied Greek, then that looks like a bunch of perhaps interesting squiggly lines, right? Another language that Paul could operate in was Latin. And that looks a little more familiar. That's the language below. It looks a little more familiar because we English speakers use the Latin script. And so it looks a little more familiar in that we recognize the letters. But unless we've studied Latin, we're not able to make out uh, what this says. So Paul is far removed from us in time, in culture, in geography, and in language. And yet, and here's where we get to the theme of this discussion, the ideas that Paul wanted to get across still make some sense to us despite all of the distance between him and us. Now it's true, if we want to really understand what Paul means when he uses the word true, or the English word, the English version of the Greek word that he wrote, translated in English as true, if we really want to understand what Paul means, then yeah, we're going to have to do that work to study the Greek, to study his culture. You know, what did people who heard these words for the first time, what did people who read these words for the first time in the ancient world, what did they think, right? And so, yeah, if, if we really want to know what Paul was getting at, then we have to do that work. And yet, I think it's true at the same time, that even though the language we're communicating in now is unlike anything that Paul was familiar with, that still these concepts would be familiar to him and us. If we could 
pull Paul into a group and we could come up with a common language and then we could describe to him things that seem to us to be excellent. I imagine we could identify things that are excellent that Paul would also say, yeah, that's excellent. I imagine that we could say something and say, here is something that I think is true. And Paul would agree, yeah, I think that's true. And probably there would be some differences too because the cultural differences are significant. The differences in time are significant. But I'll bet we could find a lot that we could agree on. What's right? What's admirable? What's excellent? What's praiseworthy? And that's the theme of, of this discussion, that the idea that even though cultures are very different, historical change obviously happens, languages are very different, Still, it may be that there are certain moral concepts that human beings share across time and across culture. Let's look at another example. Here's a sentence from a text that's even older than the New Testament. The Paul's letter to the Philippians is part of the New Testament, and that's an ancient collection of writings. The Dhammapada what this sentence is taken from, is even older, several, several hundred years older. Here's this sentence. Though you might conquer in battle a thousand times a thousand men. So if you, if you alone conquer a thousand men in battle a thousand times, you're still the greatest battle winner if you conquer just one yourself, right? Now this is expressed in somewhat extreme language, right? But the point I think we can understand pretty easily that self-discipline is not easy. Self-control is difficult. Self-mastery takes work, takes time, takes perseverance. Self-control, self-discipline, self-mastery, this is tough stuff and it takes a lot of work. That's really the idea that's being expressed here in the Dhammapada. Now, Paul's letter to the Philippians, I told you that Paul is a, a Christian leader. He's writing to Christians in that place called Philippi. Right? So that's a Christian document. The Dhammapada is a Buddhist document. Right? And when we talk about the Buddha, we're talking about a person who lived about 450 years before Paul. So several hundred years before Paul. So it's much older. It's even further removed from us in time. And it's further removed from us in geography because the civilization that the present day United States is, is most connected to has historical ties to Greece, has historical ties to Rome, obviously. But this Buddhist teaching comes to us from ancient India, from ancient Asia. And so it's further removed from us in time, it's further removed from us in geography, and then the language is also tough, whereas Paul wrote in languages that actually still are at work in English. We're, 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 often we're not aware of it, but we use a lot of Greek. English speakers are using a lot of Greek words. English speakers are using a lot of Latin words, right? So even if we can't read Greek or we're not really familiar with Greek, if we're not really familiar with Latin, we're still very much influenced by Greek and influenced by Latin, even if we're not aware of it. But the language, the original language of the Dhammapada, I think that's less true for English speakers, right? If you, you, you see the line we were just looking at, they're using the Latin script, it looks very foreign, but then down below is Pali in original script. And to my knowledge, there's not much Pali in English. And so that line from the Dhammapada is even further removed from us in time further removed from us in geography, further removed from us in culture, further removed from us in language. And yet, I think we can understand what the idea is expressed to us in English, which we can understand, but the idea is expressed in a very different culture, in a very different time, in a very different language. But I think if we could pull in somebody from the year 300 BC, who read this idea in the original language and then ourselves and we could come up with a common language and we could discuss this theme up it we could come up with some agreement on what it means the importance of discipline the importance of self-control here's the idea that perhaps it's true that 
Well, it certainly is true that you have very different cultures in the world. You have very, very different languages in the world. There's tremendous historical change. Cultures change. There are real distances between people in, over time and as a result of language. But perhaps it's true that despite all of that, there are certain moral ideas that human beings share in common, that human beings have in common. And so this is what we'll think about this week. So here are some things that we can, we can do to help us think about this. So here's a statement. While cultures can be very different, it seems that certain moral ideals, I'm sorry, that certain moral ideas make sense to all people in all places, or at the least to most people in most places. One question is, do you agree? Do you agree with that sense? If you do agree with it, why do you agree with it? If you do not agree with it, why don't you agree with it? And so this takes some thought, right, to think, think this through. Do I agree with what the, that sentence says? Another thing we can do is look at the second bullet point. Looking at the list in Philippians 4a, that's the first sentence we looked at, can you think of any act that could be linked to one of the description words, one of those adjectives, one of those adverbs, given there that would be appreciated by people living in very different cultures. So, for example, can you think of something that's excellent, right? Here's something you think of. It's like, okay, yeah, I think that this particular thing is excellent. And can you imagine bringing in someone from ancient India, bringing in someone from ancient Greece, expressing to them your idea of something that you think is excellent? And can you imagine them also saying, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that that is excellent. Or I think that that is good. Or I think that that is admirable. I think that that is praiseworthy. I think that that's true, and I think that that is right. And not only talking to people from the ancient world, but if we had a similar conversation with somebody living today in Bolivia, living today in Fiji, living today in France, living today in Nigeria. The idea we're working with is that although languages are very different, cultures are very different, historical change certainly happens. There are certain moral ideas that human beings can just identify with, kind of regardless of all of those differences. What do we think about that idea?